Hey, what's up? John Sanmez here. I'm here with uh, with Tom from Flip Anything USA. You guys probably seen the video. I did an interview with him earlier and Manny from 2000 Books. And we're actually here in Austin today. Uh, Tom has, has agreed to uh, show us around. Tom is like my big real estate mentor. You know, I, I, I've been teaching you guys about the real estate deals that I do, uh, mostly very, you know, small residential. I've got, you know, 26 units, but Tom is, uh, you know, he's the guru. He really, uh, you know, takes, if you want to take it to the next level. And so what we're going to do is we're just kind of looking at, at some of Tom's properties. He's kind of answering questions, uh, you know, kind of mentoring us. Uh, you know, everyone needs a mentor. It doesn't matter where you're at in life. And so that's, that's what we're doing here. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah. So we're at Tom's property here on, uh, in Austin, Texas, and uh, he's just about to put it on the market, or it's maybe on the market in some ways. So we're, we're, I'm just trying to figure out the basics of this commercial property. Yeah. So uh, the way I operate, generally most stuff I buy, I generally hold for a long time. If it's a commercial piece, you guys can't see it. I'll drive around, you'll be able to see it. This is a commercial property. I actually bought this. If you guys know and you follow my channel at Flip Anything USA, you know, I I only. I don't buy anything unless I'm buying it under market. That's just how it is. And right. a lot of people have a hard time fathoming that happening. But if you're patient and you're always diligently looking, you can always find property under market. And uh, this building here, this is a 12,500 square foot building. Uh, I probably bought it 15 years ago. Uh, most of the buildings around me were selling for 60, 70 bucks a foot. Now they're all worth about 200 bucks a foot. This is kind of what was considered... Uh, kind of the, the barn in the back of the big the cool buildings this is a nice building just didn't have as many windows it was kind of like the maintenance area for these other offices so when I bought this I bought it for uh, 240,000 bucks okay that's for like 12,500 feet it was a very very good deal the day I bought it I could have tripled my money for sure okay but so from that day I was making money I was making a real decent return on it so uh, to ask, answer Manny's question, I've told him I put it on the market. Now, why did I put it on the market? A, I have other property I'd like to develop. I have a three-acre corner. I want to build another 30000 I just soon pay cash for it. Or I, I'm spoiled because most of my property is very near my other properties, and I've already shown you guys some of those. Yeah. So I had a bigger tenant move out of this place, and when he moved out... Um, that's an opportunity to sell. And I'll tell you why. A, we're in a very hot market here right now. There is demand. And when there's demand, people will overpay. Things get pushed up to a ridiculous level. People right. are buying on a 4% cap. I try never to buy anything unless there's at least a 15% cap. And just, just so they understand, cap rate... Cap rate is the sure. the return that you're making on the on the money that you invest yeah. on the on the value of that property, right? Yeah. So well, percentage. The, the, the easiest way to explain it and for me to understand it, and I'm a real basic guy, is just assume whatever you paid cash for. If you pay right. cash for something, 100% mm -hmm. cash for something, what is your annual return? So right. if I pay a million dollars for something, I need to get at least 150,000 clear, exactly. Yeah. Right. So the reason that we'll go buy in my apartments, I have some apartment buildings that I paid $10,000 a unit for. Yeah. And they were making money because I bought them so cheap anyways. I got them a good deal when I bought them. And well, we, I also want to talk about this deal, though, Tom. Because uh, okay, I, I want sure. to talk okay. about this commercial deal. Because yeah, yeah. a lot of the guys here are thinking, well, commercial is not for me. I, maybe I can buy residential. I don't know if I can buy commercial. Sure. Well, but but in this case, a commercial building like this, let's say you're, it's up for sale for 1.5. And I, I want to invest in commercial. What's okay. my next step? Okay. So two things. I'm going to answer your question, and let's. Oh, you want to turn? We can show the guys the. A little oh bit yeah. Of the, let's the, see the properties. Uh, oh man, it would have been even more fun if it was live. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can see it's a brick structure. These are offices. Uh, the, my building in back was a little bit taller. You'll probably get a glimpse of it back through the through here. Yeah. Anyhow, basically the same thing. It's all the same brown brick. I'll drive around again, anyways. So this is three big office buildings. My building's in the back, not quite as nice, uh, but that's okay. So I got a good deal on it, but back to the question. So I've had my building leased for many years, and I've been happy with the cash flow on it. Uh, one of the reasons I want to sell is I want this one's a little bit further away from my home base. Not, I mean, it's, it's like eight miles away, not very far. But 
I'm selling it because I want to buy something else. Well, the opportunity comes for me to sell it when there's a vacancy. And the reason I say that is a user will pay more for a property or can afford to pay more for a property than an investor. So as an investor, when I buy right. something, the bank is going to expect uh, is going to expect 25% down mm -hmm. because you're not owner occupied, mm -hmm. right? You're just an investor, and they want to make sure that you know you're not going to walk. Number one. So I'll turn this, and you folks can see. There's my building, right there. It says building, building, two. building, two. building two. Okay. So, so with uh, let me fix that. So with building two. Uh, in, in this case, you know, I'm happy with the return and all, but back to his questions. The reason I'm spurring to say that is I have an opportunity to sell it. Because I had a vacancy that was roughly 30% of the building, the bank, they will give a better interest rate mm -hmm. and demand a lower down payment for what an would it owner. Be? What's the comparison? Well, for an owner user, they, they will be happy with 20% down. That's the general thing. Right. The owner user, 25% down and you'll get a better interest rate. You know, maybe say- oh, What's the difference? Probably half a point. So okay. if interest rates are four and a half for an investor, they're gonna be four for a user. So 20% right. down and 4% interest. interest so, compared so, to 25% yeah. down and four and a half percent. Correct. Which means okay. you can get a higher price for the property because they can spend more money. Yeah. And, and I know there's a demand. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to find a building to buy for yourself. Right. Almost everybody's stuck renting. That's how it is. I mm -hmm. mean, that's how I capitalize is I'm renting to people. And, you know, a guy needs 4,000 feet. Hard to find a 4,000 square foot building. Right. Hard to find a 10,000 square foot building. No, it's just hard for the, to have the perfect situation. I have this opportunity to sell because I have a vacancy. Right. So now the things have changed because I got tired. I let it sit empty for about three months. And I said, ah, I'd rather have that extra 10 grand back or, you know, on that 30%. So I started renting it up again and I rented the last unit. Now, I said I had a 30% vacancy. Generally, uh, when you when uh, a bank is gonna want you to occupy 50% of it, but to be honest, they really don't pay that close attention. <laughs> so you can have 30% of the building and say it's 50, or say that I intend to occupy 50% right. when the other 20% comes available. Okay, and so that's so, what you... So hang on, so let me, let me, let me clarify this stuff here. You're, I'm going to the bank as an investor now, okay? I'm saying I'll put down 25%, and I will. Uh, I'm okay with the four and a half percent interest rate. Now the bank says, I need you to prove it to me that 50% of the building is occupied and producing a certain amount of cash flow, which should cover the mortgage. Is that how it works? Oh no, no, no. no. In this situation, with an investor purchase, yeah. they want to see that it's a hundred percent occupied. Right. Because okay. they're going to they, look. For the... They are very uncomfortable yeah. with any vacancy factor. Right. And right. not only that, they're going to want to see all your leases. Yeah. And they're going to look at the terms. They want to see how long they're leased. And they're going to know for how much, and then they're going to do all the math, and they're going to figure out what your return on investment is. Yeah, right. And it certainly be, it has to be better than the four and a half percent interest that exactly. you're paying. Right. And so, like anybody that's following me knows that, like to me, I bought a, you know, I bought a center that was, oh, I don't know, almost maybe thirty thousand square feet, and it was producing uh, a, a real nice return with a thirty percent vacancy rate. Wow. Now yeah. I paid cash for the place, so I didn't have to worry about borrowing money. But it had a seven and a half percent return mm. on my cash mm. with only seventy percent occupied. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I what I could see also coming was renewals on the rents, the leases were gonna be expiring, the market is hot, there's an opportunity for them to be I got probably got it to about a ten percent cap with seventy percent occupied. But of course, you know, I rented the whole place out, so now I'm hundred percent occupied and you know it's a decent return. It's a very good return. Right. So the bank um, so the bank wants to see that you have, let's say on a 1.5 million property, you're not only going to be able to pay the mortgage, but you're going to have a certain extra amount uh, coming in on a monthly basis, and the lease term should be a certain length of time. They, what makes them feel warm and cozy is cash flow, yeah. profit, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, knowing that the leases are long term. So you know what I mean? What are the percentages here? What are we talking? Like what percent cash flow is good? What percent prop? Like what percent cap rate is good for a bank to say, okay, I want to invest in this or I want to loan you the money or not? Well, they're looking at cash flow. They also have their own economic data forecasts of what things are going to do. And so, because uh, they'll start getting stingy when they start to see things decline on the reports that they get on the overall economy. 
but in general when things are good like they are and I always brag about how I mean <laughs> it's a good economy right yeah, it's yeah. a great economy best we've had in a long time yeah. and it looks like it's going to stay good for at least another seven years so so with that in mind I saw an opportunity to sell it so I had the vacancy well now it's full so now I'm limited to only being able to sell this to investors 